But let's start with those Emmys, Dave. We got the nominations. There's a lot of, like you said, a lot of new nominations. You know, the, the some of the shows that have won in past years either ended, weren't, you know, didn't put shows out last year for one reason or another. COVID Emmys, like you said. So there's, I think there's a lot to dig into in terms of nominations, but what stood out to you just in general right away? Hmm. I think what stood out to me is just I was not, not like, I had no negative thoughts, you know. It's always quick to get reactionary about snubs and uh, mistakes and whatnot. I'm like, yeah, there, you can find some mistakes. Like, I'm not a fan of giving Hamilton more awards just to, just to do it when there's other people you can be awarding for the first time. Mm-hmm. Alas, yeah, I think that it, look, it looks pretty good to me. And like you said, there's a lot of shows that are not in the mix. Only one of the comedy series nominations was previously nominated, and that's the Kaminsky method, which is not even that popular of a of a, of a comedy for Netflix. Mm-hmm. Drama, same thing. The last last year's winner, Succession, obviously has not yet returned, therefore cannot be nominated. Uh, the only previous winner this time around that's nominated is The Handmaid's Tale. So it's a lot of new blood, and that's cool. And you know, you think like big picture. Netflix probably has their best chance yet to win one of the big awards, namely Best Drama with The Crown. Uh, Famously, they got beat to the punch as a streamer when Hulu won for Handmaids a few years back. And Netflix keeps getting lots and lots of nominations, but they don't have that big prize yet. But you got to figure the time is finally here with The Crown. Yeah, The Crown feels like this could be it. Although we said the same thing about you know, John Hamm when he was up against Cranston all those years of Breaking Bad, like there was just going to be a year. Right. Um, but, you know, in recent years, the Americans did break through um, in uh, what was that, the year when Game of Thrones wasn't in it finally or something like that? Yes, they, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe this this is going to work out for the crown. You know, I think just kind of scrolling through the list, I mean, that, you know, there's always going to be some things you can you know squabble with like for example you look in the comedy series emily in paris a widely panned show especially as we talk about the relationship that it has with the hollywood foreign press at the golden globes you know there's there's going to be something to be said there but you know for that category 10 15 ted lasso pretty inspired picks i would say um limited series I don't think there's anything wrong with this series at all. I mean, uh, all five of these are worthy. It's and stacked as fuck is what I don't it even. Is. Yeah. How do you pick? How do you pick out of these five? I may destroy you. Mayor Beast Town, the Queen's Gambit, the Underground Railroad and WandaVision. We have reviews on all of these. So go check that out. So I don't know, man. I, I, I agree with you. I think this is actually a pretty good nomination year. Um, I, I want to just shout out that. In the lead actress in a drama series, MJ Rodriguez. Yep. First uh, transgender actor to get a nomination in a lead category, which is pretty cool um, for Pose. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Pose continues to be a, a show that's breaking down some of these uh, walls within the awards season, at least at the Emmys. Um, any other things that stood out to you? I'm really pumped to see Hacks getting a lot of love in here. Yeah, that's awesome. A double nom for Gene Smart, also a supporting nom for Mayor of Easttown, as well as lead mm-hmm. for Hacks. That's great. Um, yeah, love it. Uh, thinking of, like you said, comedy series, and you have Emily in Paris there. I'm trying to think, like, com- like this was kind of the talk going in. Comedy series is kind of kind of thin this year mm-hmm. in terms of stuff you could pick. Like, I know people like Girls 5 Eva on Peacock. I haven't seen it. But that's the only thing that kind of like immediately comes to mind for me. I mean, you're, you do have like Cobra Kai is getting in. That's a popular yeah. show, but not the most critically adored show. So uh, they they did what they could, I feel like, you know. Um, I, I guess a Made for Love on HBO Max. Now that we know that's not a limited series that has been renewed, I guess that's something that I would have liked to see here. I also would have loved to see in drama industry, which uh, mm. just doesn't feel like it had the push, but maybe in future seasons, that's something that HBO and BBC could uh, get done. That'd be cool. Um, there's a lot of love for Lovecraft Country, notably a show that got a polarizing reception, 
but also more importantly has been canceled already and it's got a ton of nominations for hbo yeah uh, i'm i'm kind of glad to see lovecraft country get some love because i think they took some big swings and i really appreciate the everything that went into that um but yeah very strange timing to see it get so much love when it's not coming back um you know, one one nomination that stands out and I think could be interesting to watch. So obviously Conan O'Brien wrapped up his talk show very recently. Um, and, and that we didn't talk about that, but I watched the final episode and just kind of seeing Conan's uh, influence on that industry and just his comedic influence over the past now three decades. Um, pretty remarkable. But in the Variety Talk series, it's almost always last week tonight with John Oliver. It's actually become a bit of a running joke among yeah. everybody in the category. But I wonder if maybe Conan could sneak in this year and get a little bit of that legacy love. What do you think? Yeah, that'd be cool. They yeah, they I, again didn't honor Jesus and Marrow. So that's like I think the next best thing is to yeah. just try and go against the grain at least a little bit. Um thinking of other stuff here. Um I mean just looking at it, the most nominated shows crown being tied for the most makes sense 24 Mm -hmm. but then you have the mandalorian at 24 wandavision 23 uh i expected them to be here but i didn't expect them to be quite that strong lots been made of the networks the company breakdown of total nominations and when you add up all the subsequent uh streamers and networks disney is technically number one because of course they just have you know the volume there between abc and hulu and disney plus but stepping uh, breaking it down to actual service hbo just edges out netflix 130 129 i'd expect fully expect hbo to actually win the most like they do every year but netflix does have the uh quantity uh side of the equation down we know that at this point it's kind of funny to look at like look lower though right quibi now owned by uh, Roku of all people, like the Roku content is owned by uh, the Quibi content is owned by Roku. Quibi since canceled got eight nominations, which is more than Paramount Plus, Peacock, AMC, and Showtime. Like no one would have picked that. No, definitely not. Um, yeah, the the breakdown's really interesting, and you can kind of see. You know, obviously Netflix. I think you mentioned had the record breaking year last year with 160. Didn't get um, ne- you know nearly as many this year. 31 less but it's going to be netflix and hbo max with disney plus slowly creeping up into the conversation i think dominating and then you know these smaller ones getting the uh you know kind of pulling pulling up the rear so to speak you know just wanted to give a couple more shout outs on the nominations that i really was pleased to see giancarlo esposito the mandalorian uh awesome just great to see him getting recognized um also bowen yang from snl um who there was a lot of controversy, not necessarily related to him, but to another potential cast member. We don't need to necessarily um, dive into that, but I think it's nice just to see him. He's been one of the clear standouts on that show. Um, so it's, you know, you don't really get a lot of people standing out in SNL nowadays. So it's <laughs> nice to see him get uh, recognized when they do. Um, and yeah, also just kind of going through some of these, like, Carl Weathers got nominated for Mandalorian. So Timothy Oliphant, which is pretty cool for guest actor. Um, there's just some some really fun nominations mm-hmm. on here. So I think this is maybe a year where, where people can dive in and be like, oh, I watched that over this past year because I was did nothing but stay inside and probably watch TV. And it's nice to see those things get recognized. So um, any early picks for um, comedy series? Because I think you're leaning crown for drama, right? Right, right. Yeah, and we'll do our full predictions, youtube.com slash nostalgia pod, shortly before the Emmys air uh, and towards the end of September. Yeah, drama uh, for the crown for sure. Comedy, hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like I don't have a good handle on it right now. Flight Attendant got some Globes love, right? Um, mm-hmm. ex- actually, you know, never mind. The most nominated show in this category is Ted Lasso. Probably Ted Lasso will just run away with this. Yeah, I was leaning that way too. I think it's actually like a three horse race i think hacks ted lasso and maybe blackish just because it's been on so long kind of a right mainstay in the category at this point so always always there but yeah we're gonna be doing our predictions as it gets closer uh oh. what's the date of this uh the 19th of september yes. uh two, actually two you know, months 
thinking of the ha- the Hamilton of it all, Hamilton getting a lot of love in the the acting categories for limited series or movie. One thing that one piece of uh, you know, uh, nom- something you can nominate that got edged out in the process is small acts, which is completely ignored here. We had this whole big thing about what is small acts, Oscars, Emmys, movies, TV. And yet it turns out something so super, super excellent got recognized by neither body. And Crazy. that's just a mistake, obviously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steve McQueen just breaking the minds of award nominators everywhere. <laughs> so uh, go check out small acts. Really great. 